What's up everybody? Blue Gabe. We're out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. And we come across this pot of baits that were just, or fish, not baits. Fish blowing up on bait. They were going nuts. Luckily I have a little diamond jig because they're not eating anything that I have because the baits are eating a real small. So I put this little teeny diamond jig on. When you're fishing, always be ready for anything. If you're dolphin fishing, be ready for little tunas. If you're tuna fishing, be ready for dolphin, wahoo, pretty much anything. You see me when I'm fighting, I cut my reel just a little bit. Unless you really know what you're doing, don't do that. Because it adds so much more pressure. Well, we did. I'm hoping it's not a bonita. You'll hear me all the time saying, keep your rod bent. That's the most important thing. Nice little skipjack tuna. Over the rail and in the pail. Look at that. Look how pretty he is though. A lot of people Unfortunately, consider this ow, this fish not a very good eating fish. Well, they are crazy. That's what I caught him on. A little, just a little diamond jig. Why I grabbed that was because I could see that's what they were eating. Look at that. Put him on ice. I'm gonna bleed him in here. So I just poke my finger right there in his gills. Completely cover him in ice. Let's go catch another one. When I tell you to wing it over there and reel. Throw it. Now reel, reel. Fast as you can. Got him, fish on. What do you think? Got one on. Just keep that rod bent and reel. Look at him right there, busting. Oh. Oh, reel him in and pitch him right in the boat. Quick as you can, don't even stop. Keep reeling, keep your rod tip up. Rod tip up, keep reeling. Keep reeling, keep his head up, come on. Keep his head up, keep his head up. Pitch him in here. Boom, just like that. All right, all right, they're right there, take them off. Son, I got, I'm trying to film, I'm trying to do everything. I need to catch his daddy now. Y'all, he's rushing me. We only got one out of that little pod. Fortunately for us, they're everywhere. But you know what? We got enough for dinner for a fact. Actually, I need to bleed. Mine, I you didn't bleed, bleed him. Right now. Let's go look. Now y'all will notice, show them the blood on the sea deck. I'm not worried about that blood on the sea deck. I'll wash it off when I get to it because it comes right off. Got two nice tuna and we got more to catch. Let me explain something to y'all. They ban straws, drinking straws, right? I'll be 40 in August and I've never seen a drinking straw floating in the ocean. But balloons like that are by the thousands. You think I'm exaggerating when I say the thousands? My buddy Funfish Al on Instagram does airboat tours and he literally finds a dozen a day and he rides the same path every day. You guys, do me a favor and do the world a favor don't don't even buy balloons they're a waste of time like don't buy them and definitely don't let them go and if you pass by one and you're on the water you should stop and pick it up yeah pop it now put it in a thing let's go catch a tuna got him i got him hooked in the tail you can see the end of my rod look at that i know i have him hooked in the end of the tail Oh, get him in, get him in. <laughs> They're there everywhere right now. All right, watch this, watch this. Get them popping up. Oh! Ho, ho! Hooked up. This is a better fish. 
We're having sashimi. We're ha oh, he come off. Every time you get excited. If I had more time, I would put a bigger treble hook on here, but who cares? We're catching them. We got one just free swam by the boat right there. Watch this though. Long cast. As soon as it hits. Oh! Oh, I got him again. Uh, I would love to get in and swim with them, but I'm sure there's some kind of huge shark here that I don't want any part of. Another cool thing about these fish is they're so plentiful, you can catch a bunch of them, use what you want to eat, and then save some for bait later. I think Trey and I are gonna go in and bottom fish in a minute. We'll use these for cut bottom fish bait too. Oh, I got him! <laughs> Trey, it's your turn after I get this one in. My arm is your arm pulling. getting tired yet? Yeah. When you think a fish comes off, like it just looked like he did, keep reeling as fast as you can. Don't ever stop reeling until your bait gets back to the boat. If the fish come off like that, who cares? Keep reeling because look at the tuna under the boat. I want it to land really close to where they're at. Oh, the, oh gosh. Fish on. Yeah. What in the world? There he comes. That little fish just pulled like crazy. But I won the battle. So we just found a nice weed line. I can already see another balloon over there, but look at this trash. There's a big plastic bag, little pieces of trash, big pieces of trash. This whole weed line is littered with trash. There's even a shoe. The point of my story is guys, everybody likes to say, I don't, I don't litter. But this litter's getting out here somehow. Now, yes, every now and then I'm sure I have a piece of trash that blows out of my truck or out of my boat. But for the most part, I always try to go and get it. But I'm out here in the ocean and there's trash everywhere. I can see a balloon right now, 350 yards from here. We're going to stop what we're doing and go get it. And then we're going to head in and see if we can't catch a bottom fish or maybe even pick up a dolphin on another weed line. Because for some unknown reason, there's none here and there should be. What do you got? No. A what? Snook. Oh, that's a slot fish. Don't horse him. Bring him over. Let me get my net. Hold on. Where did we get it? Where's the net? Right here. Can you get the... Don't spool him. Hold your rod bent. Keep your rod bent. Keep your rod bent. Get him out of the power poles. Come on, get him up. Get him up. Come on. Right here. Keep that rod bent. Keep Trey. You guys heard me 15 times say keep your rod bent. He broke that fish off because he pointed the rod at the fish, period. He can get mad all he wants. I'm glad that happened for all y'all to watch because y'all heard me, keep the rod bent. All he had to do was bend that rod and point it right at me and I'd have netted it. But he kept pointing the rod right at the fish, pop, broke him off and he just lost a slot keeper snook. Hey, Trey, look, see what happens when you keep the rod bent? You catch him. Nice, beautiful snook. Ow! You kept hearing me say, keep the rod bent, keep the rod bent. So this is a good time for the best tech tip I could ever give y'all. When you point the rod at the fish, there's no play and it's just twice as hard than when you let this rod bend and the rod takes some of the pressure off the line, the leader line and the main line. That's why you always in every video hear me say, keep the rod bent. We were offshore at Stewart it got super crazy rough. We had to run all the way to Fort Pierce Inlet to get back in because my boat couldn't make it back to Stewart. Had a bunch of live bait, just pulled in here. I just caught a snook. He just had to keep it right to the boat and broke him off. But now we're headed to my house in Stewart, Florida to make tuna tostadas. My favorite food in the whole wide world to eat. And just like that, we're back at my house. But guess what? I don't have a cameraman. Trey had to go back with his mom today. Had to get chores done, had to do a little bit of work. And I'm here making tuna tostadas. So. I've already cleaned the tuna and I'm going to show you that real quick. Just cut right down the middle, flay them out just like any other fish, but keep it clean with paper towels.
I've already fried the flour tortillas. I'll show you that. Now as far as the sauce, I'm gonna show you how to make that. I did wasabi, lime, mayonnaise. Super simple. Now back to the snook. I know some of y'all are gonna be like, oh my God, you were so hard on Trey, you shouldn't have. What do you mean you're happy he lost the fish? I'm not happy that he lost the fish. Obviously, I'm not, common sense says I'm not happy he lost the fish. But there's no what better way for me to explain to you guys what not to do than showing you a perfect example of it. And that's what I meant. Trey was upset, but Trey learned a valuable lesson. Now let's get to these tuna tostadas because today at 6 p.m. Rachel will be here and I'm going to meet up with Team Real Cowboy, Steve Price. Y'all go check out my turtle video to see who Steve Price is. That was a big hit, a big video for me. And he's such an awesome man. We're loading up my airboat and we're hauling butt to Lake Kissimmee to go to the like biggest airboat ride of the year anywhere around here. There will be thousands of airboats there and we're gonna go frog gigging. But let's, let, me, let me show you how to make these tuna tostadas. First, I'm just taking two pieces of the fried flour tortillas, that's it. Then I'm gonna add the sauce. Bam, just like that. We're gonna take some tuna, bam. Now we're gonna take some pickled ginger. Now we're gonna take some sesame seeds. Bam, just like that. And bam, just like that, that's it. I've got a little bit of my homemade sauce, wasabi, mayonnaise, and lime. Got a little bit of raw tuna, got some sesame seeds, and got some pickled ginger, tuna tostadas. I can tell you one thing, these are the best things you'll ever make for any kind of party, even if it's just for a normal dinner, wedding, anything y'all want, tuna tostadas. They are so good. Mm-hmm, <laughs> All those flavors combined, I could eat that all day, every day, and twice on Sunday.